Good evening. Let's go through the induced EMF. From Faraday's law, we learn how an EMF can be induced in a coil. EMF can be induced in two ways, and based on that, it is classified into dynamically induced EMF and statically induced EMF. The primary requirement for EMF induction is given by Faraday's first law that is, whenever there is a change in magnetic flux linking with a coil or conductor, an EMF is induced in it. And this change in magnetic flux or change in magnetic flux linking with a conductor can be achieved in two ways. Either we can use a stationary conductor in a varying magnetic field or we can use a moving conductor in a constant magnetic field. This is the basis for classification of induced EMF into dynamically induced EMF and statically induced EMF. And dynamically induced EMF is one in which when the conductor is moved in a stationary magnetic field in such a way that the flux linking with it changes and then an EMF is induced in this way is known as dynamically induced EMF. And statically induced EMF is one in which when the magnetic field is changing or varying and the conductor is stationary and in such a way the flux linking with it changes, then that EMF is known as the statically induced EMF. Let us first go through dynamically induced EMF and for dynamically induced EMF, consider a constant magnetic field that is considered a north pole and south pole and this is a magnetic field lines or magnetic flux of this magnetic field. It's flex from the north pole to south pole and a conductor is placed inside this magnetic field and I am going to move the conductor in with a velocity. I am going to move the conductor with a velocity V. Let L be the length of the conductor. Let L be the length of the conductor. V is the velocity in which I am moving the conductor. V is the velocity that is in meter per second I am moving the conductor. And let the conductor be moved by a small distance dx in time dt. Let the conductor moves in a small distance in time dt. Then according to Faraday's law we can represent dynamically induced EM of E is equal to n into d phi by dt. That is we can represent phi is equal to b into a that is equal to n into d into b into a divided by dt. We can represent flux density phi in terms of flux density and area and therefore and from that we can represent it is equal to you know, if conductor is moved at a velocity v through a distance dx through a small distance dx in time dt then i can represent area swept by the conductor as length l into dx the distance through which the conductor is therefore i can represent this equation as that is i can n represent into flux in terms of flux density and area and if the conductor l the conductor is moved through a velocity v through a dx small distance by dx dt, in time dt that is then equal i can to represent the area by dt area swept by the conductor is equal to l into dx that is length dx into by that dt small is equal distance to length of the conductor l into that small l distance into and from i can i can represent total em of induced is equal to b into n into l into dx by dt we know that dx by dt is a into velocity that is b into n into l into v and let the number of turns is equal to 1 if number of turns n is equal to 1 then em of induced e is equal to b into length into velocity that is b is into l into velocity this is a maximum value of velocity this is the maximum value of velocity if moved the conductor if i moved the conductor in such a direction and the actual if the conductor is moved at an angle theta to the magnetic field that is if the conductor is moved at an angle let the conductor is moved at an angle theta with a velocity theta moved at an angle theta sorry this is theta if the conductor is moved at an angle theta to the magnetic field then induced emf is given by e is equal to b into l into v sin theta and this value is maximum when theta is 90 degree that is when the conductor is moved at right angles that is e is maximum when theta is equal to 90 degree that is e is maximum when conductor is moved at a 
right angles to the magnetic field more perpendicular to the magnetic field then emf induced in the conductor is maximum that is dynamically induced emf is the emf in which conductor is moved in a stationary magnetic field such that the flux linking with the conductor varies and emf induced in it and this induced emf is maximum when the conductor is moved perpendicular to the magnetic field and e is equal to zero when theta is uh, sin theta is equal to zero degree that is E is equal to minimum or is equal to zero when it is moved, conductor is moved parallel, parallel to the magnetic field. Therefore, these are the two conditions of, uh, these are the two conditions of dynamically induced EMF that it is maximum when conductor is moved perpendicular to the magnetic field and it is minimum when conductor is moved parallel to the magnetic field. Next one, let's go through statically induced EMF. As we described, dynamically induced EMF is one minute. Conductor is moved and magnetic magnetic field is stationary. Similarly, statically induced EMF is just opposite to that one. That is, in statically induced EMF, the conductor statically induced EMF the conductor is stationary. Conductor is stationary and magnetic field is varying or moving. Conductor is stationary and magnetic field is varying or moving such an emf induced is known as